Spotlight Art Talks highlight member and friend artists of all ages and experiences. So, hi everyone. Welcome to Any Squared Spotlight. Um, today we have Nick Dali, um, someone who we've known for quite a while, probably since 2015-ish, 2016-ish, um, and uh, used to come to the studio a little more often until she got very busy with lots of things. She is the manager of Cat Spit Records and also does a lot of the illustration for Cat Spit Records and uh, does uh, a lot of different kinds of artwork and illustrations. Um, and it's super exciting to have you on this art talk and I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to have you. So okay. thanks for having me, Tracy. <laughs> it's great to have you. Cool. All right. Can you Talk about me? who you are too. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Hey guys, um, so I go by the name Nick. Uh, my artist name is Nick Dolly, uh, like Tracy said. Um, I have been going to Any Square for a long time. I started going, I think, around 2015. And that's actually uh, where I met Gretchen, who was the main artist for this mural that I'm showing you guys. So this is something that we worked on in 2017. Uh, Caesar, Caesar, who's also there right now, has also worked on this, as you can see him. <laughs> um, so that op so any squared has opened up a lot of doors for me. I met a lot of great artists there. Um, I started painting mostly. I'm a traditional painter as well as a digital artist. Um, right now I mostly do digital arts, but I'm just gonna go by and show you some of my older stuff throughout some of the years. So this is all goes together. So I've done a lot of paintings, mostly with acrylic. And these are oil. You're going by so fast. I'm so sorry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so this is an oil painting I most recently did, I think. Um, I want to show you guys the traditional stuff before I go into the digital stuff because it all it's all kind of in a timeline. <laughs> um, so I do uh, work in traditional art in the sense that um, I focused on facilitating art groups for people with intellectual disabilities for four years. And I mostly worked on crafts and uh, we did some murals, we did mosaics, we did a lot of that. And I'll show you guys some pictures of theirs. I think this is cat's bit, sorry. <laughs> Okay, uh, let me start from the beginning with that. Um, so for the past, um, I wanna say like four years, I've been working as a training counselor and um, art group facilitator for people with intellectual disabilities. And we focus a lot of, on a lot of crafts and mostly just getting them to, you know, just have a good time and express themselves that way. But we also made a lot of things for them to sell and work on their own art inventory and kind of just get financial independence. And I did that for a, a while. <laughs> I only brought a few photos with me, but this is an art installation that they did. Um, well, we all did together. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> so Martin, you see, you know, they did most of it and I helped them hang it up and we did the whole installation together. Um, most of it is made out of recycled materials, um, anything that basically just, you know, helps them feel like texture and, you know, make it come to life, I guess. <laughs> this is from Mardi Gras. I don't know if you guys have ever been to a Mardi Gras party, but... <laughs> Those are cool! Ones. Those are cool! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they were really fun to make, uh, mostly made out of cardboard and lots of wood and different, like, fabrics and papers. And a lot of these actually sold out, <laughs> which is which is wild. 
Um, but we actually hosted like donor events for our art, um, our art studio, which I managed there as well. This is some of the stuff they did also with what I taught them, like uh, Mexican folk art, because I'm <laughs> Mexican <laughs> and a lot of us are as well and the ones I work with. Um, so Tracy mentioned they do work for Catspit Records. I've been working there for about three years now. I started off as just a resident artist. Um, I honestly, my first logo that I ever drew for them was in pencil and paper because I didn't have anything else. <laughs> and this is it. This is the one I originally drew. And they actually bought it off me and then they hired me after that. And then I turned it into eventually this, which is used for now, like their logo. Because now I learned how to do everything digitally. And that was <laughs> a whole adventure on its own. Um, I just brought a few photos to show you like things that we've done together with uh, them. This is our logo. We use it for our live streams. We do uh, live stream concerts. Um, I hire all the, I mean, I, I get all the bands and the musicians. We have a variety of music play, like house music, um, cumbia, hip hop. Uh, we've had some metal bands play, some indie bands, stuff like that. And this is the kind of stuff that I do. I don't know if you can see this. Oh my goodness. Oh, you can't see that one. Okay, well, I tried. <laughs> I do like lower thirds. I do all the graphics for their flyers. I do everything that they need for Cat's Bit. Um, I do have a picture of an album cover that I designed. This was about two years ago, and I did it on Adobe Illustrator, which was <laughs> weird to learn, but I learned uh, Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. So, it, you know, now it's a vinyl, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> that was the first time I've ever seen that. Let's see. Hmm. And aside from that, I just do my own art right now. I only work for Cat's Fit right now. And I do, sometimes I do some murals. I've only done like three maybe in my life, which is, it's, it's kind of cool, but I want to do a lot more. This is something I did on 18th Street. Um, it's on 18th and Wood. And it's for, I think it's a Michoacana kind of uh, restaurant. But I don't know what else to find. <laughs> Okay, I can just show you guys all these. This is digital stuff that I've done. My business card <laughs> that I designed. I tried. <laughs> show everything. <laughs> everything. I'm all right. Yeah. It's just gonna be random though. There's a bunch of random things here. Talk about each one and what, what it was about and why why you did them and okay. what you learned from them and um, what you like about them and what was hard about them. So think about it that way, like each one, just give a little story. All right, well, this one is just for Halloween. I believe I did it last year and I turned it into a sticker design. Um, I think I just wanted to do something for the season because it is my favorite season. <laughs> um, it's made digitally appropriate. And I just enjoy, I like the neat, I've like, I put nature into most of my art. So you'll see that in the majority of the paintings and drawings that I'll show you guys in a bit. And this is um, a Luna moth that I painted. Um, I, like I said, I put a lot of nature into everything. My art is very inspired by nature uh, and creepy things all together. <laughs> it's done in acrylic. Um, I don't know if that many of these, but I do draw a lot of girls. I know Tracy, you've seen a lot of my art like that that has the little aliens with the four eyes. Um, that's just kind of, uh, I just did that because, you know, I wear glasses and that is something that <laughs> has been said a lot about people with glasses. So I just use it in a cooler way. Um, but yeah, as you can see, she has more plants around her, a lot of nature based stuff. Uh, this painting, I did it for Pintura Obscura. It's a gallery that happens every year. I participated in last year, but this is the one I, I submitted for this year. 
and it's from Pura. I did this one with acrylic on canvas and yeah, that was a really cool experience to do that because I love seeing everybody else's art in that gallery. What is that event about? Um, so um, it's around like Halloween season, I guess you could say. Um, and it's every, every year they have a different theme. So it's usually like spooky themes. Um, I think last year was like Memento Mori. This year, I believe it was just, it was called Creature Feature. So there was, uh, everybody had different kinds of like uh, classic monsters. And I chose Vampira. And more butterflies. <laughs> I went, I think there was a series that I did that was like just bugs because I really like insects. Um, so I know I have the specific species like written down, but I don't remember them all. But yeah, this is done in acrylic as well. I was in a tiny art show, so I did a lot of tiny art. I believe this is like three by three inches, pretty small. <laughs> this one's also really small. This is for spooky season again. You know, Beetlejuice, this is Lydia Dietz. And done, done with acrylic and markers and all that too. My business card. Um, I drew this on Procreate, but then I also took it to Illustrator and Photoshop. So I had to, I had to, well, I drew every, I drew the, the girl, of course, and all the butterflies and the flowers and stuff. Everything else I did on Photoshop, with the gradients in the background and such. But yeah, I have the business card. It's just, I don't know, it's cute. <laughs> and this is where I actually got it from. So this is the girl, do you see that? <laughs> this is the one I did in 2018, I think. So I recreated her. I recognize them. Them. <laughs> yeah, so I did. I just recreated it and made it into my business card because I really like that drawing, but I never did much with it. So I just thought now that I could, I have more like access to different things I should try. But yeah, this is where my inspiration from that one. Some gouache paintings that I did in the past. I believe this is, was for Inktober of a couple years ago. I'm not sure if I'm going to participate this year because it's <laughs> so much pressure. But um, yeah, just mushrooms. Like, like I said, lots of nature stuff on my art. Um, and then this one was the picture you took. I think you sent me this picture. Oh, we had uh, that displayed at Any Squared for a while. Yes. <laughs> yes, when I was <laughs> artist. Of the month. <laughs> yeah, do you, I don't know if you guys still do that, but I hope you We've guys do. I've up way too long. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, that's cool. She has cool art. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is one of my favorites. It's actually hung up at my studio for Cat's Pit Records. It just belongs there, but you know, nobody really owns it. I just leave it there. <laughs> Some random like marker slaps that I did. I, I think I did these in my travel to Colorado when I was hiking and stuff. Um, but yeah, more bugs more nature. Um, I believe this is more kind of like life and death, you know, just like this. Yeah. Um, this one, I wanted to say, I wanted to talk about because this is more like, um, this is Ojalate. This is tin art. And I did a lot of this um, when, as volunteer at the library with children. So we would do like ornaments with ojalate and um, I would you know show them how to draw on them and we would use Sharpies to color them. But we would use tin for ornaments and we would, you know, volunteer also we've done uh, volunteers for festivals where we've sat down and done ojalate with anybody who just walks by, you know, children mostly. But it's a really cool craft. So I what have this do one. you use? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. What to, what tools do you use for that? Um, so this is a tin sheet that um, it basically comes in a roll and I just fold it into a cardboard frame. Um, I mostly what I do is, I guess you could use like a ballpoint pen to really push it in. And you have to push in the designs in there. Um, it's actually really relaxing actually. <laughs> Uh, you could even put a sheet of paper with a drawing on top of it and 
like if somebody's not feeling creative, you know, they could have like something printed out and you could just kind of trace it on top of the tin and cut it out and put, make it as an ornament or in this case, a frame. Um, it's an activity that I think a lot of people really like. And it's also a part of, I believe in like Mexican culture because, you know, I've seen a lot of it um, in Mexican uh, art that I've seen. Just like this, you see? And then inside of this one, I actually did sun prints, which is another thing I did with as a volunteer at libraries for with children. And basically it's just a that's I think that's the first way to get the photographers used to make prints of their photographs before before you could just go to Walgreens and just get it done, you know. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, so we we could just go outside and uh, scavenge for any plants or any leaves, any flowers that you'd like to see the silhouette of. And you put it on top and you just leave it out in the sun and the sun prints it up. And it's super cool. And you could do that also with fabric, which is, I wanna try that. <laughs> but yeah, these are really cool projects that I've done that are not just painting and you know working on my tablet. <laughs> An oil painting that I did. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched this movie. It's called Killer Clowns from Outer Space. It's from the eighties, but <laughs> it's something that I grew up watching and it's super cool to me. Um, I did this with oils and then I sealed it eventually with resin. Um, I did it obviously for the, I really like the movie. So it's just fan art. And this, I think this was my first ever oil painting. <laughs> I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, my friend helped me do it because <laughs> I didn't know anything about oils at the time. So I kind of just went with it. But it's, yeah, this is the process. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I kind of just went for it. I just drew whatever I think of and just started painting. But, you know, like I said, I like spooky things. Um, definitely, like, you know, death. <laughs> Let's see. Sorry. I like went backwards. Okay. Some more bugs and flowers. That's something that I, I think I want to do more of is more nature things. Um, I really like insects. I have quite a couple tattooed. <laughs> like I really just, I don't know, they're fascinating to me. The the record that I did. I have a copy of it too. It's super cool. <laughs> it's actually, it's a punk band called Peach Vomit that we were working with for a while. So that was really cool. Let's see. Um, I wanted to show this picture just to see, like, just to show you guys what the live streams kind of look like. Um, I was messing around with the fader at this, when I took this, but so you can see the members kind of all over the place. <laughs> but I do the lower thirds that are in the bottom where it says like the band name and all their info and stuff. And I'm the one controlling all the cameras and the lights. So I learned a lot of like uh, stage light design through this, through this experience. <laughs> um, Multimedia, you know, but somewhere like I started dabbling more into like psychedelic art and textures and patterns, and I just wanted to play around with colors more. I guess just this is more a fun piece that I wanted to do. Uh, this I think uh, you might recognize this, but it's something I also took out of an old painting I did, a really really old painting, and I just turned it into a more PG painting <laughs> because it was very very uh, crazy <laughs> before but I use it as my logo right now for my Instagram it's just something that like I said the four eyes you know <laughs> and I used to I don't know if you remember Tracy but I used to have like the hair completely that color like back in the day my hair used to be entirely that color <laughs> yes yes yeah yes. <laughs> so I don't know that's basically my inspiration but it's, I don't know, obviously don't look like that, but it'd be cool if I did look like that. <laughs> How is it from Procreate and, and back and forth between Procreate and more traditional mediums? How do you like Procreate? Um, I like Procreate just because it's, I have everything I need in there. Um, it's um, a lot quicker sometimes. It could also, it's also a lot cleaner, but but obviously you can never go wrong with traditional. I love getting my hands dirty with some paint and all that, you know, but, um, but I do notice since I am going back and forth, 
um, I noticed that I try to like zoom into my canvases, like my real canvases. I'll try to zoom into my paintings and I'm just like, I can't, can't do that. <laughs> but I do that a lot. So it, or it does, undo. Yeah, it's exactly, it, it gets really confusing sometimes, but um, I do like how easy it is to just like blend things on Procreate. Um, it is also my favorite program compared to the other ones that I've tried. I've tried like Adobe Draw and like Adobe Illustrate and um, I mean, yes, Vector is good, but I also like blending. So I use Procreate better. It, it's but, also drawing directly on the screen where the others yeah. would not be drawing directly on the well, screen. Well, actually, um, so I can, I, I actually connect my iPad to my laptop and I'm just basically mirroring it. So I could actually draw with my pencil directly on my iPad and I could just, you know, if I needed to control anything on the lab, on the computer, I could just do that too. So I don't know, it's, all of this is something I just started learning actually. I just started doing digital art like three years ago, maybe when I started working for Catspit because the, they're the ones who like told me I had to do it. <laughs> like if you want to, you know, be a part of this, you have to learn all these programs. And I was just somebody who, I don't know. It's a funny story actually. He found me, my boss found me at a punk show displaying my art on tables because I used to always do that. I used to vend my art at tables at punk shows and metal shows and parks and stuff and you know wherever I could and that's where my boss found me. <laughs> he bought my art and that's where he like hired me to do all this digital stuff so I'm it's pretty exciting you know like to have gone from I mean I, I don't want to say nobody because I, I was still somebody <laughs> but it's exciting. Uh, these are just acrylic paintings. Don't look at the video. Ignore, <laughs> ignore that. That is my workstation. <laughs> um, some more digital ones that I did. Like I said, the four eyes, alien girl. I think um, something I notice about me is that I use color. Like the color of the skin is never like like regular skin tones that we have, um, and that's mostly because I don't want to represent any skin color at all. I think I just want anybody to be able to like see themselves as the alien person. <laughs> and it doesn't really, you know, matter what color they are, you know? So I know I started doing that a couple of years ago for that reason. Um, I also do a lot of, I mean, I, I've done a lot of like logo work and t-shirt designs. Um, this is a t-shirt design I recently did for somebody. I believe they are a content creator on Instagram. And, you know, they hit me up for a t-shirt design. So I just, this is basically their, it's a picture of them as a zombie. So I did this one like a month ago. Just thought it'd be cool to show something more recent. <laughs> so yeah, you can see like I tried to draw her like more of a zombie. So um, I do have somewhere in here, another, like this is a business card that I did for somebody else. I wanted to just show, show examples of that. Um, I drew the, the Brad stall. <laughs> she asked me to draw a Brad stall uh, in clubwear. So I thought that was pretty exciting. I've never <laughs> drawn clubwear before. So that was a new one for me. But, um, but yeah, this is the front of the business card. And I, I've done a couple of these already. I'm still new in graphic design. I haven't really, you know, been working in there for too much. And I'm also self-taught. I don't have, I never went to school for anything besides high school. <laughs> but people have been giving me opportunities and I've been able to learn all this. So thankfully, you know, there's YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that um, helps. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't have any more of those logos. Things. Yeah, these are something I did a really long time ago. Digital art in 2000 and maybe 18. That was like years ago. I don't draw anymore. And it's cool. I don't to draw see anymore. That. I don't draw like this anymore. Oh, okay. Like I notice a lot of things that I can I've done differently now. But I would also like to do more scenes like this, like, you know, whole backgrounds and everything. I'm not good at drawing backgrounds, at least not yet. 
And I don't know if you remember this one. This is a gouache, gouache painting I did. Yes, yes. It's a gouache You've painting. You've developed so much over the last few years that I've known you. You've like yes. developing and changing and and working on 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 your illustrations and your. Yes. Paintings. Yeah, I try to um, stick to still drawing. Like I still try to practice drawing on paper, but it's a lot harder now. <laughs> But yeah, this is something I did a long a while ago, not too long ago, but it's on it's in gouache. I believe it's on multimedia paper, but it's my one of my favorites. Obviously, um it's supposed to be like a symbol between me and my own daughter, because I have a daughter <laughs> and she accepts me for being spooky. <laughs> and I really like that. <laughs> so that's something I really love about this painting. It's called Motherhood. But in my own way. <laughs> And here are some commissions I did. I have some, I think two of them right here. This is, I did this on Adobe Illustrator. So you can see that there's no blending. And that was the hardest thing. <laughs> I tried to like make the darker colors really show on there. But yeah, I did this for a DJ. It just simplify everything. Yeah. It was still like it still took me a long time, but you know it was still cool to do it because it was it was a challenge for me because I like blending. I'm a I blend my stuff, you know. But this is a challenge for me for sure, and I don't know. He really liked it. He has these headphones. They look like this in real life, so I just you know went with it. But yeah, I really like this one. I love the colors of it. Is another I do commissions um, for people. Sometimes it could be like portraits of their themselves, somebody that they love, their pets. Um, my commissions are open for those, usually all the time. So I usually do those on the spare time. You'll see me like hanging out with my friends, and I'm still drawing my commissions for people on my iPad. And now I print them out, and I can mail them out for people. So. It's pretty exciting. This one I did on Procreate, so you can see all the blending I did instead of compared to the other one that does had no blending. And it's just more of a cart like a cartoon version of her. But this was really fun to do. I did the backgrounds and stuff on on Photoshop. So I do take it back and forth. Let's see some more spooky art. This was actually the last show I did before COVID. <laughs> I think this was the month that um, we went on lockdown for the first time, like right before that. So I did this on a paddle and it was just mixed media. It's like acrylic and oils and you can see the actual rope on there. And I think that's a keychain, <laughs> but <laughs> it came, I mean, I sold that one that around that too, that time too. It's, um, I actually did this one because I had an old painting similar to this that I did ages ago. And it looks nothing like this, but it, this is kind of like more an improved version of it. Um, and that one got stolen at an art show. So that was really sad. So I recreated Aww. it. Yeah, so I recreated it, but in somewhere else. So you can see I have all my stuff in the background. I was vending at the time still. So. But yeah. That's my art stuff. I'm going to stop sharing it now. I had a lot more, but I deleted a lot of stuff because I was like, it's going to be too much. <laughs> oh, you should, you can show more. No, it's, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's, up um, I, you. it's up to you. It's no, up it's okay. You. I would, I wouldn't want to dig through that. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I, have done a lot of different things these past couple of years, like from digital art to traditional to crafting and DIY everything and just, you know, helping other people. And it's been an exhausting couple of years. <laughs> so I'm glad to be just working for Cat's Bit now. Well, that's awesome, actually. I'm so happy that you're, you have one job. But I also admired yeah, exactly. all this <laughs> we're doing with different people doing all those craft kind of uh, working with uh, development mentally disabled people with crafts and selling yes. them, uh, 
having them sell their art as well. Yeah, they actually, um, it was a great program that we had because we also had gotten grants and we had donors and all that that just wanted to focus on the art studio aspect. And they were able to not, I mean, not just, you know, doing that, but that's their own form of independence. And, you know, it's, oh, I don't know, they were so comfortable making art with me that, you know, it was awesome. We actually got to do um, a couple of community things. So we actually um, built our own floats for the Halloween parade downtown. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so we had our own float and they made their own costumes and everything. So we spent like months doing that. But we've done a lot of like stuff like that. We have our own mosaics and stuff and they've had done murals. Like they're fantastic. Like they did so much throughout the time that I was there. And that was probably the best couple of years that I had. <laughs> they were, yeah, they were really great. They taught me more, I think. <laughs> well, you're also sh figuring out how to explain things and show people how to make stuff. And then you learn more yeah. it because you're it's, teaching. It's also that, but as, I was also a training counselor, so. It was, it wasn't even just like, just the art aspect that I had to work with them with. Like, I also had to work through their emotions and, you know, they were having a bad day when they walked in and I just had to be like, you know, it's okay. We still have the whole day ahead of us. Like, let's, let's go make the day of it, you know? And that alone, like at seven in the morning, it was the hardest thing, <laughs> but I was always like glad to do it, you know? And so even throughout, like when COVID, you know, was going on, we had closed our day programs and I still went to um, group homes to work with other people with dis uh, intellectual disabilities in group homes. And I would be the art facilitator <laughs> and they would take me to different centers and I would have like art groups outside and doing garden stuff. And it was just a lot of, I don't know, there was just too, ma like, too many things I think to talk about with that, but that was, there was a lot of things that we did. <laughs> It's exciting to see the, the development of all the things that you've done over the years, because uh, <laughs> also like you didn't talk that much about the mural that you did with uh, Gretchen, but that was like a giant piece of public art that you worked on for months. I wish I had the video of it. Um, I could try to find it. <laughs> Let me try. Rogers Park has been a but, part of my art. So the so the mural was actually a set of resilience, um, and I you can see there's a lot of there's a diverse work. I always wanted uh, to people in that mural, different and characters that Gretchen that created and make uh, for her comics. Rogers Park has allowed me to, but she included every kind of person you could think of, which is awesome because that's basically you know what resilience means is you know staying strong, keeping together, each other. And there's a lot of people that pass by there and they're honking and everything every time we were there. It was, it was so weird. <laughs> I want people to feel happy when they see it. This little boy asked his dad why I was painting and the dad goes like, well, she's an artist, so that's what she does, she paints. And he's like, wow, I want to be an artist someday and <laughs> that day was, that was wonderful. I just remember a lot of people stopping by with their cars and honking and going, oh, you guys are doing a great job, you know. I thought that was pretty cool because, like, well, I'm not from that area, so somebody from like, from like a different area coming in there to work on their, like, aesthetic, you know, um, and all the, the people from the community coming in and telling you that you're doing a good job. I feel that like that's a, it's a pretty good feeling. We had an amazing team for this project. We worked together very well. We helped each other. We encouraged each other. We learned from each other. The process was as important as the result, and I'm really happy with the way things turned out. This is in Rogers Park. There are so many it's still there, we need to address right? In this yeah, it is. State, mm -hmm. in this state, and in this it's country. definitely still there because I saw it and took a photograph of it. It <laughs> is wonderful. The strong oh community my God. Park. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's you know, a picture cool. of it. All these bright colors, all these beautiful faces. I hope that people walk by and smile and say, this is me and this is Rogers Park. <laughs> I love, I, I, you know, you've kind of done a lot of different kinds of stuff and you're still like emerging as an artist and becoming yes. what you want to be. And now that you're like doing this thing with Cat Spit, you're just working for them, which is good. Yes.
Yes. I think it's something that I, I want to focus on. Um, I didn't know I wanted to, but you know, my, my boss, um, he came up with like the kookiest ideas. Like at first we were just a record label and then we turned into a record store and then we turned into a like, record studio. And then we're just all these things. And I've been there for all of it. And um, I don't know, I don't, I hope, I don't see myself without them anytime soon. Mm -hmm. They're like my family, too. I don't know, but we've been through it for a while. <laughs> Because I know um, I want to work in the music industry, but I'm not sure how yet. I know I can, I, I do work in some kind of like wiring. I do work with wiring at the studios. My boss is teaching me all that. So it's kind of like studio management, but recording studio management. That'd be really cool. Who knows how that'll work out in the future, but <laughs> that's something that- you're evolving. Like, you're evolving. Yes. <laughs> it's exciting to see you kind of like, kind of, I'm everywhere I'm and you're also everywhere. doing their t-shirts <laughs> and their graphics for their albums and different yes. things you're doing. and what yeah. kind of they do primarily um so uh, the record label yeah so we actually don't have a specific kind of like we okay. don't have a specific genre at first we were just going to focus on punk um i'm i like i love punk i'm more of a metalhead myself but i love punk too so I started introducing more metal bands into our shows and into like introducing my boss to them. And um, I, I don't know, I, I actually got a lot more metal bands to come and play for us, but we also play a lot of house music. Uh, he knows a lot of DJs. My boss is actually a sound engineer, so he fixes turntables for a living. So he knows a bunch of DJs. Oh, and good they person play to know. I know, right? <laughs> so, um, he actually uh, brings in a lot of his his DJ friends and we do, we've done like 12 hour live streams of DJ sets, so like house music, techno, like acid, like all these different kinds of electronic music. So, so how did it change during COVID in terms of how you were doing, you did more live streams during COVID than you were doing? Um, so we actually didn't start doing live streams until COVID. Um, we wanted to figure out a way to help out the community and get them, you know, out there and keep us safe as well. So. You know, there was only three of us at the studio working there. So we had our own stations behind walls. People would come in and, you know, obviously mask on when we we're all together. But if you're performing, you're in your own room, take your mask off, you know, but it was only the band and us. And it was just, we kept it that way. We actually had a lot more business in the beginning of COVID with live streams because of that, because everybody wanted to get a chance to play and nobody could have concerts or shows. And so we just wanted to do it, you know, have a party in your living room, listening to live streams, you know, so we did that for a while. We did, I think actually Carlos life painted for one of our yeah, shows. Did a, I, remember I think it was our first life. show ever. <laughs> we the first ever live stream and Carlos was live drunk. So that's, that's how you know we've been friends for a while. <laughs> I remember his live stream. I remember, I remember yes. him on there. Yeah, so that was really cool too. I think we had two bands play that day. I, I don't remember, but that was I like I the think, combination of the art and the music. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that, I don't know, but the live stream thing was is relatively kind of like I think it's like a year old. I want to say. Yeah. But it's it's probably the coolest thing because um, I got to bring my friends' bands to come play, and you know we've done the pay per view so bands can get paid and musicians can get musicians can get paid. But also we've done free ones so that people can just watch them and have fun. And yeah. you know, that's the whole point of it. I think something that I like about our record label is that we just care about the community. I'm from the I'm from the community, like I am some who like participated in the community for years and especially has gone to a lot of local shows and for music and stuff. So I like to keep that into my work as well, keeping supporting everybody and whatnot. So we also buy their inventory. They come play with us. We buy off their inventory of merch and mm -hmm. sell it through ours, but they already have the money. And then we keep, we just, you know, what we sell from at the store. But they already make all their money from their merch. Yeah. So we try to support everybody and keep everybody going and all that. So that's something that I hope we continue doing. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I have, I was like thinking of some things. Um, that we didn't that, that you didn't 
touch on um, is like, what are your, I'm waiting for the train to go by because <laughs> we're at studio and it's during studio day is like, you know, what are your influences? Who, what, what are your biggest influences in terms of art and also your record label that you're part of now? Um, I think for my arts, I honestly, well, for sure, nature is definitely a big one. I'm somebody who loves animals and nature and all that, of course. But I also really like, um, I guess the dark parts of my art would have to go based off like what I kind of grew up with and, you know, like the alternative lifestyle, I guess you would say, and the music I listen to. Um, I listen to a lot of, you know, psychedelic music, but also a lot of like really like you can't understand a word they're saying metal you know <laughs> so it goes I think it all of that is based on like what I am as a person um and like my style and what I live by and then as well as all the influences around me nature and you know my friends especially all my friends most of my friends are artists <laughs> so like and seeing all the amazing art here in Chicago is definitely a huge influence on me I have too many favorite artists that's what i was going <laughs> to ask you next is like who are your favorite artists um so i have in, in chicago i would say um i don't know if you know cosmo she has like the bigger flowers well her art is amazing made her her husband um i like this other artist i like well like jesse james i don't know if you know who she is jesse garcia we're all have a lot, of, a lot of tattoo artists up. a lot of tattoo artists that i get you know done artwork by um I don't know I have too many like I said they're I, I don't know nobody famous that I know like obviously the the basic like old old classic painters of course we're all but, fans of each other <laughs> yeah um, I think my friends honestly I think my friends are my biggest influences because there are in my art I think always kind of have something I don't want to say similar because they don't look nothing looks the same you know but um, and some kind of like kind of have the same influences, I think, um, and lifestyles and all that. So our art kind of all goes together. And seeing their art progress makes me want to progress my art. And when they learn a new thing, like we all learn it together. And you know, when they start drawing new styles, I'm just like, I want to try stuff, something like that too. You know, like influences. You know, but my my friends, I think, are my biggest influences. <laughs> They're in the knowledge. Yes. In each other. Everywhere. Yes. <laughs> do you have any like uh things that you want to do in the future um that you know i do yet? i do want to go back to um working i really want to go back with working with people with disabilities um and keeping it in the art studio you know um i'm not sure exactly like in what uh company i would want to work for yet i see a lot of things for you know working with children with autism and that's something that i would i'm passionate about helping people with intellectual disabilities that's something i was doing for a long time and and that's something i want to keep doing i think it's something i'm good at you know yeah um so it's that's something i definitely want to be doing to be able to work with people who have different emotional capacities and yes. emotional and i have i like, have the patience and love for it you I know have the patience and love for it so i know they like i mean anybody could use a person you know like somebody yeah. who's there for you and you know whatever but i think i would like to definitely work with children of any, any children but that's something i would like to do as a in a career like i want to work on that um but for now i think i just want to work with music yeah <laughs> You'll have several lives then. I think it's going to take me a while. I'm still only 26, Tracy. Yes, yeah, so you have a lot of time. 26. You are. <laughs> and you should keep going. Yes. I'm trying to think of any other things that I wanted to ask you. Um, that I haven't asked already. I mean, are there things that, that other than like, becoming like someone who works with children are there things that you want to do with your arts um i think i do still want to participate like i want to be in bigger galleries i think that's something mm -hmm. i want to better my own art and i want to better my oil painting my my big scale paintings like i actually wanted to work on my traditional art more 
and participate in more galleries, you know, still get myself out there, but also networking and meeting other artists and getting to, you know, be a part of it, you know, that's something I do want to do in the future. And, you know, it's been hard to do that outside of during this pandemic time. Yes. You know, yes. I mean, we've been having the studio day here, so. Yeah. Hopefully it gets better. I mean, you know, <laughs> I don't know how long, I mean, it's whatever, you know, I'm patient. <laughs> For now, you know, I, I do enjoy being a mom and just working for cats fit mm -hmm. it's a lot it's a lot calmer than having two jobs because when I had two jobs it was hectic <laughs> I mean it was rewarding I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie <laughs> yeah yeah I still talk to them I know I'm gonna still volunteer and work with them oh that's the old day program yeah keep keep your relationship <laughs> yeah. I mean they're important to me so I'm gonna go they have like community garden events and they have their own garden there that I help them grow too. So I'd like to do participate in all that. That's really cool. Yeah. Does any does anyone who's on here have any questions? Not everyone's on the video. Anyone have any questions or comments? Kate? I have a question. That um, you know, that wonderful mural that you helped um create and be and still thank goodness be resilience um after the pandemic's over. Do you think you might want to work with um, some other folks to do something else like that again? Yeah, I would love to do something like that. I think working with other people on a big scale, I think that was really exciting. I would love to do that. That's great. Mm -hmm. Saul, did you have a question? I just wanted to uh, ask her to share a little bit of the background of her studio or where she's at right now so we can have an ambience of where you work at. Oh, my room. I'm just, <laughs> in, right now I'm in my living room. <laughs> Do you want to see my living room? Oh, sure. That works. Is that, is that the question? <laughs> okay. I don't know. I just have some posters on the wall. Is my friend stuff. <laughs> I have um I don't Your know built-in audience. I don't know where my dog is. Um I also have like lizard I have bearded dragons. I have two lizards. And they're heavenly. <laughs> yes. I don't know if you saw my dog earlier. Do you have anything that you want to share with us that you haven't said already? Um no. I just want to thank you again for having me. I'm so glad that you did this. Yeah, <laughs> I know I'm not usually, I'm usually, like I said, behind the camera. Yes, yes. yes. So I'm glad that <laughs> you faced the shyness and- Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I'm, thank you for sharing your work with uh, Cat Spit, some of your graphic design and your illustrations and also your paintings that you did a while ago. Yes. <laughs> I think so, there might have been one or two that you did here. <laughs> <laughs> a, yeah, <while>. maybe. <laughs> a long time ago yes so, i hope i get to go back someday <laughs> i know we miss you and it's been yeah. so great to have you thank you for doing the talk yes thank you for having me thank you everybody yeah. for and, uh, <laughs> and it was and it was good to see you doing procreate and your paintings i i didn't see i've never seen all the work that you were doing in, in procreate and to your newer stuff yeah i have a I have a lot but i just didn't i just chose a few of them because I have too many and also I left my hard drive at my job so there was so many things that I did for other like bands and everything that I had in my hard drive and I couldn't show it <laughs> so yeah I know so sad well, thanks for sharing what you did well so, thank you for doing the talk yeah thank you for having me hope you guys have a good night you have a good night too bye Check social media for future Zooms and future streams. Thank you to Hairpin Art Center for being our streaming partner.
Thanks for watching.